So our new stuff for today, we're going to talk about proportions. We've, we've talked about ratios and rates. Well, today we're going to look at what do we do with them. Well, let's say we know that we need a gear ratio. It's going to be two. Let's do the other. Five to two is usually how we do it. So we're slowing down the, the motor a little bit to get a little more power on it. So we know we're going to need a five to two gear ratio. And we have a motor that has a gear on it with 16 teeth. So we know it needs, the motor has 16 teeth. We need to figure out how many teeth the other gear has to have to make this gear ratio work. So we have the 5 to 2. Which one of those represents the motor again, the 5 or the 2? The 2. So the 16 teeth also is from the motor. <coughs> so that goes on bottom. And to solve this, we'll cross, multiply, and divide. 5 times 16 is 80. Divide by 2 makes 40. So we need a gear with 40 teeth on it. To, to mesh with that motor in order to give us the proper gear ratio. Um, let's see, we have other sorts of problems we can run into. For you guys, the big one's going to be roof slopes. So let's say you have a roof here that has a height of 8 feet on a run of 48 feet. And you want to know what the slope is. Well, a slope, of course, is always out of 12, right? But what numbers go into making that slope? Remember, a slope is rise. What's that? Well, not necessarily inches, but it could be. Inches per foot is what it technically is. But It's rise and run. Which one's the rise? 8. So 8 goes on top here. The run would be? Not 48, but 24. So now we will cross, multiply, and divide. 12 times 8 is 96. Divided by 24 is 4. So it's a 412 slope. Let's look at one here that's a 712 slope. And we've got a span of 36 feet. This time I want to know what's the height of this thing going to be. So I have the 712 slope. I'll start out with 712. You guys have seen that symbol before, right? Yeah, that just means the slope of the roof. We don't write the 12 in there usually just because it's assumed. So at 7 over 12, what's going to go on the other side over here? 18 is going to go top or bottom? On bottom. What goes on top? H, the height, right? That's what we're going to look for. So we're going to do 7 times 18 divided by 12, which gives us 10.5. Now for you guys, 10.5 feet is probably not going to be an acceptable answer. You're going to have to convert that to 10 feet and 6 inches. You guys know how to do that? So you get an answer like, you know, 10.5 is your answer you get. What you're going to do on the calculator, the 10 is the whole feet, so you're going to subtract 10. Then take the 0 0.5 times 12, converts it back into inches, so 6 inches. Um, let's say you have something like 16.6666666667 feet. To convert that into feet and inches, you're going to subtract the 16. So there's 16 whole feet. You're going to multiply that decimal by 12 to get it back to 8 inches. Those are the ones you guys should start to recognize. Like 1 third or 0.33333 is 4 inches. Now 1 fourth is 3 inches and so on. You should start to recognize those common fractions and how many inches they stand for. We'll also look at similar figures. Uh, we might have a figure like this. It's been enlarged like this. And we want to find those missing dimensions. Now we have to be told that this angle and that angle go together, and that this angle and this angle go together, so that we know that they're in the same orientation.
When it's an enlargement or a reduction, depending on how you look at it, the ratio of the sides is the same between corresponding sides. What do I mean by corresponding sides? Well, this 10 inch side, when it was enlarged, became the 25 inch side. Those are corresponding sides, they're connected to each other. So we can actually use that to get the enlargement factor here, or the, the aspect ratio it's called. 10 inches became 25. So you can think of it as either 10 to 25 or 25 to 10 ratio of sides, whichever way you want to look at it. Now to find x, where is x going to go, top or bottom? Why does it have to go on bottom? It's from the same figure as the 25. Very good. So x goes down there. What side in the other figure corresponds to x? 12. So 12 goes on top. So we're going to find x by cross multiplying. 25 times 12 is 300 divided by 10 is 30. Side note, by the way, this is the way I always set them up, but it is by no means the only way to set them up. The 10 is linked to the 25 because the 10 and the 25 are the same, the corresponding sides of the two triangles. The 10 is also linked to the 12 because they're in the same triangle, the same shape. And the same goes for the x. The x is linked to the 12 because they're corresponding sides. The x is linked to the 25 because they're in the same figure. As long as those relationships are preserved, we can put these in different orders. For example, you might write this as 10 to 25. The 25 goes over here. The 10 and 25 are linked together. Well, then below the 10 would be the 12, and over here would be the x. Notice you still have the same links. 10 is still linked to 25, and 10 is still linked to 12, just like it was over here. They're just set up in a little bit different way. You could also, you know, take the top and bottom and switch them too. Put 25 and x on top, and the 10 and 12 on bottom, or however you want to do that. So there's a lot of different ways these proportions can be set up, and they're still going to give you the same answer. In fact, you'll see here that even if it's set up this way, it's still going to be 12 times 25, just like it was 12 times 25 over here, and then divided by 10. Well, what we've looked at so far is what we call a direct relationship, a direct proportion. What that means is when one number gets bigger, the other number gets bigger. You know, if we have to have, if there's more teeth on the driving gear, there has to be more teeth on the driven gear. Um, if the span gets larger or the run gets larger, the height gets larger. Those are direct relationships. There's also something called inverse relationships out there. In an inverse relationship, when one number gets bigger, the other number actually gets smaller. For example, a pump. Let's say you show up for a job site and the basement, you, you dug a basement and it's filled with water. So you pull out the pump and you start pumping it. And let's say you have a pump that is capable of doing 6 CFM, that's 6 cubic feet per minute. You hook up that pump and you let it pump and it takes 4 hours to drain the basement. Well, let's say you have another storm that night and you come back the next day and it's flooded again. Only this time, you don't want to take four hours to pump it out. So you look around, you find another pump. This pump is actually capable of 18 CFM. So 18 cubic feet per minute. How long is it going to take? Well, here, since the capacity of the pump got larger, the time is going to have to get smaller. It's going to take less time because it's pumping faster. In this case, it's not a ratio anymore. It's a product. It, at 6 CFM, it took 4 hours. At 18 CFM, it's going to take X hours. It's still multiply and divide. It's just not cross multiply anymore. 6 times 4 is 24. And you solve the equation by dividing by 18. You get 1 and 1 third equals x. So it's only going to take an hour and 20 minutes to drain that basement with that larger pump. 
The textbook talks about these inverse proportions and setting them up in a proportion. For example, you have four hours at 6 CFM. The problem is, is because it's an inverse relationship, you have to flip the second ratio. So in this other ratio over here, the hours would go on bottom, and the CFM would go on top. So you've got 18 CFM for the other pump. That goes on top. Notice it'll be 6 times 18 divided by 4. Something went wrong there. What did I do? Oh, I know what I did wrong. But I've got to have at least some relationship. I've got to have 6 CFM goes to 18 CFM. But the 4 hours, even though that goes with the 6 CFM, it's going to go on bottom here. Because it's an inverse relationship. So it's 6 times 4 divided by 18. The moral of the story is setting them up like this is a real pain. It's really difficult to get it right. To me, it's a lot easier to set it up like this. Of the two numbers that go together are going to get multiplied. It's a constant product instead of a constant ratio, like our proportions are. For example, um, let's say you have a gear with 10 teeth meshing with a gear with 8 teeth. Which one's going to turn faster? 8. Fewer teeth means it has to turn faster. Because that gear, the 8 tooth gear, will spin one complete turn. Well, that's only 8 teeth on the 10 tooth gear, so it's still got 2 teeth to go. So the, the 10 tooth gear does not have to spin quite as fast. The relationship between that is basically with the gear ratio. So let's say that this 10 tooth gear is spinning at 400 RPM. How fast will the 8 tooth gear be? Well, it's the same as we did with the pump. We're going to use the speed times the size, 400 RPM times 10 teeth. Notice that's the same gear. The speed and the size of the same gear get multiplied. And then on the other side, we have the RPM of that times 8 teeth. So 40 or 400 times 10 is 4,000. Divide by 8. I want to be turning at 500 RPM. Make sense? It's like a pulley ratio. Let's say here we have a 10 inch pulley that is turning at 750 RPM. And over here we have a 4 inch pulley. We want to know how fast it is turning. How are we going to set that up? Ten times seven fifty or seven fifty times ten, whichever way you want to do it. What's going to go on the other side over here? Four times whatever, right? Or RPM. So this is going to be ten times seven fifty, and then divided by four, which is going to give us eighteen seventy five. That's what I thought. I didn't think it was this one. 1875 RPM. What do you think? Here's one for you. So in this pulley system, we have our 6 inch pulley over here turning at 600 RPM. I want to know how fast this pulley here is going to be turning. Yep, so we got 6 times 600 equals 10 times blank, which is going to give us 3600 divided by 10 or 360 RPM. Now do we have to do 10 times 360 equals 3 times blank? No. Why not? Yeah, this one has to turn 360 as well. They're, on, they're attached to each other, so they have to turn the same speed. This, this whole relationship here is only if they're going transferring the, the power through the belt. So you're right. It is 360, 
3 times 360 equals 4 times x. So this is 1080 is 4x divided by 4 equals 270 equals x. Stay with us, Nick. Any questions? In your book, page 163 through 164, 17 through 31, the odds are setting up proportions and finding missing numbers here for you. <laughs>